act of God, or rather the Icelandic volcano, prevented a fourth church joining us. The three of us were delighted with the quality of the entries, if not the quantity. A good number of the shortlisted programmes were worthy of an award, but the overall number of entries was down from 43 just five years ago to a little over half that figure this year. Why has there been such a decline in quantity? Though again, I must stress, not in quality. With no entries to the main Sanford Awards from either the ITV network, Sky or Channel 5, it's tempting to lay the blame on the virtual elimination of public service regulation in the commercial sector, as well as perhaps a lack of imagination among commissioners generally. If we're not careful, these will become the BBC TV sample of St. Martin Awards. Yet even BBC television, uh, unlike BBC radio, seems to be in the hands of the secular and sceptical, who view religious coverage as a rather tiresome obligation to be minimised rather than a rich and promising area to explore. One can certainly plum cherries from the corporation's television cake, and there are often very succulent ones, such as those we're celebrating today, and recent series on sacred music presented by Simon Russell Beale, though that was commissioned by a minority channel, BBC4, which has just had its budget cut back. BBC TV also has a relatively new commissioning editor of religion, Akhil Ahmed, with a proven record of success in his previous job at Channel 4, but his playing field is more the size of a fives court than a football pitch, and he's not been replaced at Channel 4. This relative neglect is nothing new. Previous chairs have complained of channel controllers showing little real interest in religion, and with the BBC propensity for musical chairs at controller level, one former head of BBC Religion described trying to get a religious strategy, a religion strategy agreed and implemented, was like knitting fog. <laughs> but another key we weakness, I believe, lies within BBC News. When the much maligned John Burt, I never thought I would utter those words, <laughs> set, set about restructuring of BBC News for current affairs in a somewhat blunt and perhaps unnecessarily bloody way, he correctly identified a real weakness in the coverage of finance and business. His solution was to create BBC editors with real budgets and power at the heart of the news machine and with guaranteed access to the airwaves. Hence Jeff Randall and now Robert Pest Pest Peston, who've transformed coverage. And of course, there's a home affairs editor and a sports editor and an arts editor, etc., etc. I believe that BBC News similarly requires a religion editor able to appear on the networks to interpret the latest religious story at home and abroad, but more importantly, to br bring a religious perspective and expertise to the vast range of areas, such as foreign affairs and medical dilemmas, where that perspective is so often and so bafflingly absent, both on air and behind the scenes in internal editorial discussions. In the unlikely event that you think this is a job application, <laughs> I should make the obvious point that I'm too old and not properly qualified. But there are several possible candidates whom, of course, I will not name. <laughs> that said, let me return, not before time, to the main business of the day, celebrating what has been achieved in this difficult broadcasting environment. We judges had a really good time viewing the shortlist of nine and trying to pick four prize winners. Two programmes which narrowly missed selection are worthy of mention. Trouble in Amish Paradise from BBC Wales followed the lives of two Amish men facing excommunication for questioning fundamental aspects of their faith. It was beautifully made and very moving. But most impressive, perhaps, was the trust which the central characters placed in the programme team and the obvious integrity with which that team went about its work. Revelations. How do you know God exists? From Anthony Thomas and Juniper, broadcast on Channel 4, dared to ask the basic and most important questions and gave leading figures from the Anglican, Roman Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, and Hindu communities in Britain, the space to answer and to discuss their own spiritual journeys. And since the answers are timeless, we suggest the program gets an annual repeat. <laughs> so, if these gems didn't win, what are the programs that did? Our first merit winner set out to unravel the events of the Golden Temple of Amritsar in 1984, which culminated in thousands of deaths, including the assassination of the Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi by one of her Sikh guards. Sonia Diol, a Sikh, presented a tricky task for her. On the one hand, she risked alienating her own community. On the other, of presenting a partisan account 
of a very controversial event. And there's always the trap in a personal exploration of elevating your own feelings above those you're filming. She didn't make any of those mistakes. It was a beautifully directed program watched by 1.3 million people who stayed up till midnight to watch it. In this extract, Sonia Dior hears from the families of those killed during and after the ending of the temple siege. Here, women who lost husbands and sons were resettled in what's become known as the widow's colony. For them, what they saw just over 25 years ago is still raw and deeply painful. Thank you. 